Hey guys, welcome back to our neck of the woods. Today's video is going to get started bright and early. Uh, it's only about 7 a.m. right now. Sun's out. It's a nice warm day. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do part two of the uh, install video of the Porsche. It's happening a little sooner than anticipated. Uh, my buddy unfortunately can't get me into the shop for about three weeks from now. So I'd rather go ahead and finish off the install uh, of all the stuff on the Porsche. That way when we get to his shop, he can go ahead and do what we're going to do. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But for right now, let's go ahead and get set up. And uh, we're going to drill some holes today. Let's go. All right, everybody, it's time. Here's the big reveal that I've been hinting at the last two videos. We have the Getty Design GT4 wing. Comes with taller GT4 style uprights, a template for drilling the holes of the mounting base, and a GT4 style profile wing. Now my buddy John painted this wing for me also, the same as the side scoops. Did a phenomenal job, went above and beyond. After we get to installing, we're going to go ahead and talk about what I think of the finish, the fit, the look, also from John and from Getty Design themselves. The Getty Design, I got a little bit more to say than I do about my buddy John, but we're going to go ahead and get started and see what we got to do to get this thing on today. So first thing we went ahead and did is we removed the Cayman S badge that was sitting back here. We went ahead and taped it up, but the first thing that we're going to have to do is go ahead and get the factory wing off, or spoiler. Pretty simple. There's a bunch of Torx bits, T20s on the bottom of the painted surface here. And then there's going to be some bolts going down and through the uprights because this thing is a hydraulic lift that picks up at 75 miles an hour. You can manually control it, which right now it's in the up position. We will have to get back behind there, disconnect the electric so that these don't automatically go up and down at speed because that's going to push right up into the bottom of the Getty base. So we're going to go ahead and reset up the camera, get all this off, get the carpet out, undo the electric, and we'll get to drilling some holes. All right, first things up, let's go ahead and get these uh, torque bits out and let's go ahead and get the factory wing off. All right, step one. All right, step two, looks like we're gonna go ahead and have to grab a 13 millimeter socket, get down in there with an extension, and go ahead and get the rest of this base plate off. Step two. All right, step three is a little bit more tricky. This all has to come out, and it's not the easiest to pull out in, in a proper order that you have to pull out because you got some side plastic or carpet, and then the plug is actually right behind here. All you got to do is reach in, disconnect after you put the uprights down, and then these won't be ever coming up again. All right, you got two plugs here. The big one is that you want to go ahead and take off. You just have to push in on both sides and pops right out. All right, because these are exposed wires, I am going to go ahead and wrap it up with electrical tape just for safety. I'm not saying anytime this is going to be returned back to stock, especially when you're drilling holes in the hatch, but just added safety, just so you don't get any corrosion, water, anything up in there that could possibly short circuit anything. All 
All right, stage three is done. Everything is back together. We'll go ahead and put the carpet in. Now we're gonna go ahead and drill our first holes. All right, so I went ahead and propped up the hatch with a five gallon bucket on the inside. The template's sliding off, so we're gonna go ahead and tape it down. We're probably gonna mark some holes, look at everything, especially I wanna look on the inside first to see where I'm gonna be coming down through when I drill. The inside uh, plastic underneath the hatch will have to come off, but right now we're just gonna go ahead and get a setup uh, before we drill any holes. That way we only have to do it one time. All right, so this is not the first wing I've ever installed on a car, but this is the first time a wing has ever come with a template. This is gonna make it so much easier than having to measure a thousand times, both horizontally, vertically, at angles. This should be a breeze, and I've already test fitted the template up to the base mount. It matches perfectly. Thanks Getty Design for doing something that nobody else does. All right, so first I'm gonna go ahead and drill a pilot hole. And then it looks like from the size of everything, we're gonna go ahead and use a quarter inch bit to finish off the hole once we get down inside. Plus this is a lot longer, so we can get through the outside shell of the hatch. And then we have to get down through the inside plastic and we have to get down through the inside uh, thicker shell uh, of what makes gives the hatch its uh, stability. No turning back now. All right, so these last two, I'm gonna go ahead and get a punch. As it's sitting on this angle right here, the drill bit's gonna to wanna to step and walk out. These ones already started to walk a little bit, but they're definitely sitting on a flat surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a punch first, just because we're dealing with drilling through an angle right here. All right, that's all the pilot holes drilled. We can go ahead and remove the template now just so we have a little bit more room to work with. We're gonna go ahead and also pop off the under plastic uh, underneath the hatch. That way we can see what we're drilling all the way down through. And uh, we'll go ahead and get uh, started on mountain and test fitting. All right, time for the first major hole on this side. It clearly goes down through the outside edge. There's about that much metal, about an inch or so uh, underneath. There's no plastic that it's gonna hit. Uh, I went ahead and put this trash bag down just because those shavings, I don't wanna get inside of the car and get into the carpet because they're a pain in the butt to get out. But we've got our quarter inch drill bit and we're gonna go ahead and get that first one started. All right, so that's the first hole that we're dealing with. As you can see, it's on this inside edge, no plastic involved. The kit did come with some caps that you can put on here after everything is done. But right now we can't get the bolt up in there. So I've got a taper drill bit. That we're gonna go ahead and enlarge this hole out. So that way we have room to get everything up in there and we can go ahead and put the plug on when we're done and finish with it, all the other holes. All right, so step drill bits work great. The hole got enlarged beautifully. Unfortunately, it's trying to come through the outside shell before we can get all the way through up to about three quarters of an inch, which looks like uh, that plug's gonna be. So we're probably gonna go ahead and leave it there uh, unless I get a three quarter inch drill bit and try not to punch through and go all the way through. Um, but we're also getting really close to the edge over here. So we may just go ahead and stop there, file that down, paint it and not worry about the plug for right now.
So we're running into our first snag. If I'm not mistaken, this hole right here is pretty much where the stopper is on the trunk. I can probably angle it in a little bit if I bring the drill bit more at this angle. But for right now, I may be able to get that stopper out. That way I can at least have a look up inside. But something tells me I'm really going to have to offset the drill bit down in here somewhere. And in closer inspection, all these other holes, we don't actually have to remove this inner lining. We should be able to get through this one inch uh, outer rim all the way around the entire car. There's only seven holes total. So these three here shouldn't be a problem, especially if you come down and angle just a little bit more. All you need to do is get that bolt up in there and when you enlarge the base hole on the bottom, it should be a lot easier to go ahead and hit up in here. But these outer ones, we're gonna have to see what we need to do with that. So if you can see what I just did there, I started out with the drill bit going straight down to get through to enlarge the hole, but then I had to turn it a little bit to punch down. That way we made sure we went through that inch lip instead of going down and hitting through that inner plastic. I just took a peek underneath that one. So far, perfect, two more to go. All right, so far so good. All three of those I pretty much hit dead on center on that center lip. All right, went ahead and put down a few more trash bags. Stepping out these holes definitely makes a lot more to debris. And we wanna make sure we're not uh, having any hot metal hit the paint and we definitely wanna keep it uh, out of the carpet on the inside. That's hot. All right, now the two scary ones. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and go at it with the uh, quarter inch drill bit, try to hit it at an angle, and then hopefully when we take the bolt that goes up in there, it'll be able to kind of swoop up and around and get up in there. Uh, also, the Allen wrench has to attach to it, so hopefully we get over far enough that we can go ahead and get that Allen up in there. That way we can go ahead and tighten down that bolt, but we'll see what happens. Changed my mind, so I'm an idiot. So the hatch bump stops, they actually screw into the plastic receiver that's up in there. And if you go ahead and take a look up in there, you can see the hole directly where I drilled. You don't even need a plug for it and it's already exposed. I'll show you right here. It's kind of hard to see, but there you go. There's the pilot hole right there behind the bump stop on the hatch. So one that we don't even have to worry about. Just go ahead and drill the quarter inch hole and we should be able to mount and we are done. Now the last thing I'm going to go ahead and do is remove the tape and I'm going to go ahead and file the holes on the inside and outside. Uh, I do have some touch up paint but I'm kind of a firm believer in silicone. It lasts 10, 20, 30 years depending on the manufacturer. It's 100% waterproof. When it sticks to something that's dry, pretty much anything, as long as there's no dirt on it, it's 100% waterproof. Paint, if you go ahead and uh, touch that up with paint, there's a possibility that water can still get under there. We all have seen cars painted if they get chipped, uh, rust starts forming underneath of the paint and then it starts to bubble. Uh, since these holes are on the outside of where the uh, actual rubber lip is, that's definitely a possibility that moisture can get in there. Put a little bit of bead of silicone, just wipe your finger around it. That silicone will last forever and it's 100% waterproof, like I said. I don't think there's anything better than it, except for the fact where you can't just put silicone like on the outside of the car, like on a car body. Touch up paint is obviously needed there because you can't get silicone 100% smooth. Uh, it gets all over everything. Uh, it's kind of like the gray anises. You open up a bottle and it's just all over your car all of a sudden. It happens to all of us. Silicone's kind of the same way. But since the silicone's gonna be under the uh, base plate and it's gonna be up under here, you're never going to see it, so it's not really a big deal.
One last cleaning before we never see this side of the hatch again. So test fit number one was a failure. The holes that I already went ahead and drilled with the step bit aren't big enough for the three quarter of an inch washers that need to go up in there uh, that go along with the bolt. So I've got two options. I can either go spend a fortune on a three quarter inch drill bit, which is they're not gonna be cheap, or better idea, I'm probably gonna take my step drill bit, which cost me $12 at a local auto parts store, and I'm gonna take my grinder and just cut off the first three to four steps here. That way I can get down all the way to the last three quarter inch step, and I won't be punching through the upper deck. Spending another $12, I guarantee is gonna be a lot cheaper than a three quarter inch drill bit. All right, a few of the steps knocked off. We should be able to finish up this hole and punch all the way through the underside of the hatch. So good news on these uh, outer holes where the bump stops were for the hatch. They're already large enough for that plug that just popped out that there's nothing that you have to do. That washer will go right up in there, no problem. All right, test fit number two. Test fit number two looks to be a success. All right, so now that test fitting is done, we're gonna go ahead and put just a tiny bead of silicone just around the holes. One, to waterproof. Two, it'll help give a little bit of adhesion, but it'll guarantee that water's never gonna get in there. And the good thing is it doesn't bind strong enough like other stuff, especially to smooth surfaces like paint. So if I ever were to go ahead and remove this, needed to repaint it, whatever, it's okay to just go ahead and scrape it off with a plastic scraper and silicone will hold up fine. All right, last time this gets installed. All right, it's all bolted down. Not exactly sure what the torque specs were. Uh, just went until I made it at least tight enough. Uh, you could hear the fiberglass move a little bit as you're tightening down, not cracking or breaking it, but I think that's the limit that you'd wanna go. We're gonna go ahead and install these plugs that Getty Design uh, gave with the kit and we should go ahead and close it and we should be all done with the spoiler. All right, now the bump stop holders and then the bump stops. There you have it. All right, now before we install the uprights, we're gonna go ahead and clean this up, polish it up one more time. A uh, little bit about these. These come from Getty Design raw aluminum. So when you see the price of the wing and you don't want a raw aluminum finish, you're gonna have to get these powder coated or painted. I opted for powder coat, went actually to a place right down the street, cost me an extra $60 to have these done. And if you notice, these are pretty tall. Uh, the GT4 comes pretty low. Uh, they do make aftermarket GT4 uprights, which I think are 100% needed. Not only does it set the GT4 off and make it look absolutely perfect, but it gets that wing up just a little bit higher, I think in a little bit more uh, airspace where it can be useful. Um, but these are the perfect height. They look like aftermarket risers for the GT4, and I think they're really gonna set this thing off perfect. If you're wondering what I'm using for cleaning, I call it Honda polish. I used to work at a motorcycle shop where I started off in, uh, as a mechanic, went to sales, went to financing, and it used to have Honda's logo on it. Now it's called the Original Bike Spirit. This stuff is an awesome detailer. Uh, it helps remove tar, bugs, smells actually pretty good. 
and we've just been using it in the bike industry for years and years. They stopped putting the Honda logo on it probably back in 2006, uh, but you can still find it today. It still looks the same pink and black can, it just doesn't have the Honda Polish logo on it anymore. So if you're looking for detailing spray, I know there's a million out there, a lot with ceramic coating in it nowadays, but this stuff here, I've been using it since 2002 and it is awesome. All right, let's get these uprights on. Now that might be a pet peeve of mine. The bolts did come silver also, along with the bolts that are gonna go through here that actually hold the wing up and adjust pitch. Uh, maybe I can get these uh anodized so that they're not silver and that way the whole car is black tell me in the comments what you think if i should go ahead and find an anodizing one or just go ahead and get these ones done so that way the whole car matches and nothing is silver now these are nice and recessed the bolts are tapered and they will fit in here extremely flush and actually even below the surface. So that is definitely a good idea instead of just having something stick out that would get uh, caught up here on the surface. All right, I'm actually just gonna leave these kind of snug for now. That way we have a little bit of adjustability when we go ahead and put the uh, uh, top blade on. That way if the fitment isn't 100%, because John also painted the upright supports. So we definitely don't wanna uh, scratch all this up because that's freshly painted too. So we're gonna leave those loose and see if we can get this on just one-handed. All right, wish me luck. All right, there you have it. Kind of first look here. I went with the second, I don't know if you can see that. It's the second one down on the inside leg. Kind of gives it a pretty flat appearance. Obviously you can adjust it for more aerodynamic, but with this lip here, it's definitely gonna catch air where it is. So I probably don't have to go any more uh, down for more downforce. This will probably be good enough just for street driving, but we'll see what it looks like once I get it all bolted up and we get it out on the street to have a real look. And if you're wondering, the visibility is not too bad either. I know it's difficult to see where the camera's sitting, but where I'm sitting, it's not bad. All right guys, there you have it. Install is complete. So what are my overall thoughts about this whole setup? Uh, first off, this is an expensive thing to get involved with. Uh, you've got the actual item itself, then you've got the painting and uh, the install, and if you can't do the install yourself, that's just gonna make the price go up even more. My, my first thoughts is about John. The painting, the prepping, the overall quality is phenomenal. Um, took him forever to do, but because he spent so much time on it. Uh, it needed a lot of prep work, uh, fiber glass isn't the easiest thing to work with it had a lot of pinholes so he had to do the clear coat a few times uh, but overall uh, John did an amazing amazing job I'm gonna link his uh, Instagram uh, down below you can go ahead and check out his other stuff uh, but if you're in the area want to hit him up through Instagram I would definitely recommend it now as for my thoughts about the Getty design wing 
If you're thinking about getting one of any kind, I don't care if it's the GT4, I don't care if it's a GT3, I don't care what it is. Uh, if you're thinking about getting the fiberglass, I would think twice about it. John spent hours and hours and hours trying to get this thing right. The fiberglass was not great from Getty. It had scratch marks in it. It needed more than just sanding. Uh, it needed basically a ton of Bondo. Uh, I believe John called his method though glazing, which is more expensive than Bondo, but you can lay it thinner. The amount that you're gonna spend on a fiberglass, even though you're saving more over a carbon fiber wing. Now, I don't know the quality of Getty Design's uh, carbon fiber, it could still need some prep work too. Maybe the clear coat isn't 100% perfect. But if you're thinking of the fiberglass, just skip it. The amount of money that you're going to spend having to pay someone who's not a friend, who just makes you pay a couple bucks for the base, the blade, and the both side skirts or side scoops, you're going to pay probably more than the wing itself. That's how much prep work the wing needed. The side scoops from Taiwan made of ABS plastic were perfect. There was nothing wrong with them. They're set in a mold. The plastic is injected. It comes out the backside or the, the finish side. Perfect. There's nothing that needed to be done except for um, plastic primer, primer, and then paint. The wing, you're going to spend way more if you just go to a body shop. In fact, a couple body shops before I remember John lived in the area and it was actually close to me, closer than I thought. Body shops even turned me down. They don't even want to do it. They don't want to touch aftermarket stuff like fiberglass body kits because they know probably that this is going to happen. The time and money that's going to be involved, you're going to get mad, you're going to get upset, and you're going to probably not even show up uh, the day that you want to have them done because they're probably going to quote you thousands of dollars and you're going to be like, eh, I thought about this for a few days. I'm going to back out and try to find somebody else. So skip fiberglass. Go straight to carbon fiber or you're going to regret it in the long run. As for the uprights that were powder coated by the local company down the street, again, flawless job. $60 right there. I would pay that all day, every day. In total, this wing shipped to my house was a little over $1,700. The uprights were another 60, and again, my friend John only charged me a couple hundred bucks to do everything. So to have that much money invested and knowing that if you don't have a friend that you're gonna have to spend that much more by someone else who may not be a friend who's gonna paint it, just go ahead and have second thoughts about uh, who you're gonna have do it. Now, I wanna go ahead and show you why John even spent even more time on this wing than what a body shop probably would. Another reason why I say John spent so much time and money is because in these details right up in here. I know it doesn't show up on camera, but where these pieces come together, they are 100% flawless. It also, it looks like it almost has a natural curve to it. These end plates do not come installed from Getty, and I don't think they come installed from any other manufacturer. The problem with this design was the end plates had an indentation on them where the wing would basically set into. There was about a 16th to an eighth inch gap in between there. So if you set the end plate on the wing, it could go up and down, front and back, and even pitch front and back. So to just use 3M tape or some sort of adhesive to stick that end plate on, not only would the wing go in and then touch the end plate, but you'd also have this little gap where the indentation was, where the wing was molded. John spent hours glazing that seam and then transitioning so that that end plate goes down and then tapers down and smooths out into that wing base. You're not gonna get that from a body shop. Not unless, again, you're paying probably over $1,000 in 10, 20, 30 hours of labor. 
I don't know what painters cost, but if you're looking at a body shop or if you're looking at a racing shop, you're looking at $100 to $120 an hour, maybe even some up to $150 an hour. You are not going to want to do that. So I don't know how the carbon fiber is made. I don't know if you can just stick them flush. I've had other wings before where the carbon fiber just ends and the end plate starts and it bolts in. So the carbon fiber just goes down and then over like a, a nice 90 degree angle. So that's easy. You're, you're not going to, you're not going to taper that and smooth that out with body filler or with glaze. So this job was beautiful. The wing is immaculate and if you're ever looking in to get something like that, just keep in mind what you're possibly going to spend in the long run when this thing gets put together. All right, guys, that's going to wrap this video up here. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you guys on the next episode. Peace.